Hello, welcome. I can uh, I shall continue the discussion whatever uh, I had started in my previous uh, lecture. That is, I was talking about state of stress. Okay, don't worry too much about it. This is technical uh, matter. So once we start with uh, numerical problems, everything goes uh, very smooth, mechanical manner. Uh, but uh, I am trying to put some some kind of injection in you and uh, to understand, uh, to aware, to be aware about uh, the technical terms what we deal in uh, mechanics of materials. So, what is state of stress? Very simple. Uh, imagine a cube surrounding a point and express the stresses that are acting on all six faces. And that is what is the state of stress. So, if you have the stresses in only one direction, then we have we call it as a one-dimensional. If we have stresses in two directions, mutually perpendicular, then we call it as two-dimensional. And in general, in all three possible directions, we call it as three-dimensional state of stress. So, I have a small question based on the discussion whatever we have carried out so far. Is it possible to have state of stress okay, at a point which is point belonging to the body, that body is loaded, all that is assumed. Understood? Is it possible to have state of stress as what number one, one dimensional, pure normal stress. Say we have what is called as pure stress. What do you mean by pure stress? That also I have told. So on a plane, if you have only one type of stress, only one type of stress, either normal or shear, then that is called as pure stress. Okay? So, this normal stress, we have tensile stress and compressive stress, please remember both of them are considered as normal stress. Okay? So, we have two types of stress, normal stress, shear stress, only two. Okay? So, if you have any one of them only on a plane, then that plane is, we say that it is having pure stress, pure normal stress. Okay, this is the one, the first part. Okay, this part is common and now I am applying it to this. One dimensional pure normal stress. Okay, let me possible. Okay, let me choose a point. Now I want to discuss one dimensional. What I should do to express the state of stress? Imagine a cube. Okay, so now I am dealing with only one direction, only one dimension, say x axis or x direction. I shall show only one face. Please remember it has dimensions perpendicular to the board also. It is a cube, what I have imagined. And I have stress in only one direction, this face, and only one, di one dimensional, because only one face. Say like this. Okay. Then what are the values? Okay, this value, see if this is 40 megapascal, then this also must be 40 megapascal. Yes, fine. Okay, is it possible or not? Yes, it is possible. So, so possible or not, that you have to check. How to check whether it is possible or not? Okay, make sure that whether it is it remains in an equilibrium state or not. Okay, you should not have a situation your element is not in equilibrium state. In that case, that state is not possible. So therefore, so this is the question, is it possible? How do you check whether it is possible or not? If your element, whatever the cube you have imagined, if it remains in equilibrium state, then it is possible. Okay, now 40, 40 is just a normal, 40 multiplied by this area, what is this area? This length multiplied by perpendicular length. This is equal to the perpendicular length. It is cube. Therefore, if A is the area, then all the faces have the same area. Then 40 multiplied by area, that is a force which is acting in positive x direction. 40 multiplied by area is the force which is acting in the negative x direction. And this force and this force, they are equal, opposite, collinear, and therefore resultant is zero. And therefore, this is possible. This remains in the equilibrium state. Yes, possible. 
when we will be making the control that it is possible. So instead of 40, I can just make it say sigma x in general anything. It may be positive or it may be negative. So this is, is it possible or not? Yes, it is possible. Because again the same argument, this element remains in equilibrium state. Therefore, this state of stress is possible. And therefore, the answer for this question is yes, possible. I can think of, I can have one dimensional pure normal state of stress. That is the meaning. Okay, so now let me proceed to the another one. So, is it possible with shear stress? One dimensional pure shear stress. One dimensional pure shear stress. Okay, so let me assume so the same point. And again, one dimensional I am talking, and therefore I shall imagine the cube, but cube I am showing only one place, the front one. You have perpendicular dimensions, you have the faces here and back side, all six faces, the only one face I am seeing. Okay, I have shear stress, okay, say so this one and this one. This I call it as tau y x. How is the rotation? Tau is the shear stress. Why? On what face? On what face? The face is normal to which axis? The face. This is the face. The face is normal to y axis. Therefore, the first thing is y. And in what direction? It is in the x direction. Therefore, this is what we call as tau y x. If this is tau x, okay, then this also is tau y x. Okay, fine. Now is it, is it in a equilibrium state? Okay, now to answer is it possible or not, that can be answered only by checking whether this is in a equilibrium state or not. Okay, so what are the conditions for equilibrium? The resultant force must be zero. It is not only part, you have one more thing. The moment due to forces also must be equal to zero. Okay, what is the force here? I have a stress here. Tau y x multiplied by this area. What is this area? A. Tau y x multiplied by A is the force which is acting in the horizontally towards right. Similarly, this tau y x multiplied by area is the force which is acting towards left. So this force and this force they are equal in magnitude. And they, this is acting towards right, this is acting towards left. It appears that the result will be zero. Wait, wait, don't jump to the conclusion that it is in equilibrium state. So you have one force which is acting like this. This is a force which is equal to tau y x multiplied by area. You have another force here, tau y x multiplied by the area. This force is acting here. This force is acting here. Please remember they are not collinear, they are parallel. And this force and this force, what do they do? They are parallel and they will form a couple. So when they form a couple, what is the effect of the couple? The effect of the couple is to rotate the body. So now this couple will start rotating this member, this element in the clockwise direction. And hence this is not in equilibrium state. And hence this is not possible. I can never have pure shear state of stress in one dimension and that is impossible. So therefore, this state of stress is not possible. So what is the meaning then? How, how this can become? In the equilibrium state, how is it possible? So now, okay, let me start with again. So now I have an element, okay. So what are the sides? This side is equal to this side and perpendicular also. I am talking again one dimensional and I have one stress and this thing. So this is a tau yx. This also is tau yx. Okay. So now as I know that, as I know that this is not in equilibrium state and therefore these two together, let me name this, say A, B, have what is called as A B C is equal to B C 
is equal to C D is equal to A D. So the angle C D is Q. And you also have perpendicular dimensions, which is also equal to the thickness. If thickness is the the perpendicular dimension. Okay. So now this force and this force they will form a couple. Tau y axis multiplied by if A is the area of the face, any one face, all faces have the same area. Tau y x multiplied by area. What do you get? This. This is stress. This is area. This is a force. Okay. Force multiplied by this force is acting in this direction. This direction. This is the perpendicular distance multiplied by A B. What is this? This is couple. Trying to or tends to, tends to rotate, tends to rotate. Okay, element in what direction? Element in clockwise direction. This is how these two stresses will try to rotate, and therefore that is why that is the reason why we concluded that this is not. state of stress this is not in equilibrium and therefore this cannot be the state and therefore what we must have now therefore we must have a couple in anti clockwise direction okay therefore we are going to have stresses here also the shear stresses are going to be here also you cannot have only these two stresses whenever you have these two stresses these two stresses are going to be complementary Okay, you buy something, you have something, and something is complementary, free. Okay, you have these pieces, you have this is free. Or if you have these pieces, then this is free. So that is why you call these, we call these pieces as complementary shear. Okay, so what these shear pieces should do? These shear pieces also. So first of all, okay, the, these two are opposite to each other. These two shear stresses are opposite to each other because the resultant has to be zero. The resultant of these two is zero. The resultant of these two also must be zero. Therefore, these two are also opposite. Okay, so it can be like this. This is one option. Or the other one is upwards here, downwards here. Okay, so now let me start. Say, can it be like this? Can it be like this? Okay. So now these two also must form a couple. Now let me assume how much is this? Say let me assume that this tau dash or tau one, and this also is tau one. Okay, so tau one, and what is the area here? Area on which this is shear stress, this acting T V A, the same, and here also tau one. Tau one multiplied by A in the downward direction. Tau one multiplied by a in the upward direction, the resultant is zero. Absolutely no problem. But these two also will form a couple. These two, tau one multiplied by a and tau one multiplied by a upwards and downwards here. These two also will form a couple in what direction? In the same clockwise direction. So therefore, this again will not remain in the equilibrium state. The purpose is not so, and therefore I cannot have. The directions of these stresses like this, it has to be opposite. What is that? So this is upwards, and this has to be downwards. So tau one. Okay, now tau one multiplied by a is the force here, and tau one multiplied by a is the force here. This multiplied by what is the perpendicular distance between these two? What is the perpendicular distance between these two? That is equal to say AD, AD or BC. This is what this is couple, couple tends to. How do you get this couple? This is complementary. This is the couple due to what is called as complementary shear. Couple. What this does? Thus, this couple tends to rotate. Element in what direction? In 
anti clockwise direction so now there is there is hope that this can become equi in a equilibrium state these two are, are trying to these two forces are trying to rotate in clockwise these two are trying to rotate in anti clockwise now i have to see what is the fight between the two if they are equal then it doesn't rotate therefore what is that what is that tau y x multiplied by a multiplied by a b must be equal to tau 1 multiplied by a multiplied by a d so a and a cancels you know that a d is the same as a d therefore this also cancels therefore tau y x and tau 1 they are equal in magnitude therefore the shear stress is never one dimensional the shear stress you will have definitely in two directions at least the starting state of shear stress with pure shear is always a two dimensional i can think of three dimensional also but i can never think of one dimensional pure shear stress i hope you have understood okay so now this is the starting point now i am trying to go to what is called as pure shear stress Okay, how to check whether a, a state of stress, say randomly some, somebody prepares a state of stress and check whether it is in a easy state of stress or not. Somebody says that, so he gives, he, he draws a cube and indicates the stresses and check, he, he asks you to check whether it is a state of stress or not. What do you have to do? Check whether that element remains in an equilibrium state or not. If it remains in equilibrium, then that is the state. Otherwise, it is never a state. Okay, so now I would like to discuss what is called as pure shear. Pure shear. This is what I would like to discuss now. Okay, so let me assume that I have a shear stress here and I also have a shear stress here this way. If I show the other way directly, then it won't remain in a equilibrium state. Okay? Let me assume that say this is A, this is B, this is C, this is B. Okay? So I shall assume that A, B is equal to B, C is equal to C, D is equal to A, D, and it is also equal to the thickness, the perpendicular dimension. Very important. Okay? So observe now carefully. Now the element A, B, C, D, whatever I have drawn, okay, it, it, it looks, this is A, B, C, D, A square now. This is before the application of these stresses. This square before the application, the face what I am looking at it. Okay, now the moment I apply this stress, this is called as tau yx or whether you call it as tau xy both of them are one and the same tau yx is equal to tau xy it can be easily proved and therefore the magnitude of this shear stress the magnitude of this shear stress they are one and the same the same value ok that's what we have already proved so now what happens carefully observe here ok so I hold this Okay, though I am applying, I have having here the stress tau xy and this also is tau xy. Okay, so now what happens? This, if I hold it all, in other words, this surface, this plane, okay, tries to go this way, and this face tries to go this way. Or in other words, it becomes something like this. This is A and B and say this is B and say this is C. The new. Okay, let me call it as A1, D1, B1, C1. After the application of these stresses, it becomes like this. The shape which was square earlier, in fact it is a cube, every face is a square and which was square, now it has become a shape of this. Okay, the shape is distorted. The shear stress always 
tends to distort the shape of the body. That is why shiastasis is also called as distortion stress. If you have only normal stress, say for example, if you have a, a, a square element of the same size, etc., and say you apply normal stress, only normal stress, you don't have shear stress, then the shape of the body will remain like this only. It may change. A square is a special case of rectangle. If I consider this as a rectangle, and depending upon the dimensions of these stresses, then again it may become something like this. Please remember, this is a rectangle now. Okay? So if x sigma x equal to sigma y, in that case the, the new shape also is a new square. So therefore the shape of the face has not changed and therefore normal stress will never tend to change the shape of the body. But shear stress always tends to change the shape of the body and therefore it is also called as distortion stress. This is the this is the shape or before the application of the load and this is the one which is after the application of the load. So both the diagrams I would like to draw it in a single one. So, so A1, D1, I shall merge it with this and it becomes something like this. This face AB probably has moved here, it has become AB1 and similarly CD has moved something like this and say this is C1 and A, B1, C1, D. I have made A1, D1, two points. This is after the distortion. So usually this is parallel to this. Okay. And I have shown this as if for the distortion very much so that you can feel it. But in real practical case, you are not going to have so much distortion. Or in other words, this angle, you know, this angle is very, very, very small of the order of one degree, a half degree, and something like that. As the elongation is in terms of a fraction of millimeters. You know? Similarly, here also the angle of the distortion, whatever we call it, and that angle also is very, very, very small. And this angle, if I denote it by pi, and this angle also is pi, then pi t is called as this is what we refer as shear strain. The shear strain is nothing but this pi. Phi is called as shear strain. And when phi is very, very, very small, this is also equal to what is called as tan. For small angles, phi value and tan phi value, they are one and the same. When I am talking in terms of radians, okay, if I say phi equal to 10 degrees, tan, de tan, de tan degrees is, is dimensionless. But when you are talking 10 degrees, it has units. So therefore, I am not talking about 10 degrees and this thing. So convert that uh, uh, phi in radians, then tan phi, tan phi. Okay? They are one and the same. For small values of phi, tan phi and phi, they are one and the same. So therefore, phi is shear strain. And when I know that phi is very small, then I can also say that tan phi is defined as shear strain. Tan phi is nothing but this is shear strain. So we have shear stress, we have shear strain, we have shear stress and we have shear strain. And if I am doing all this within the elastic limit, if my values are all within the elastic limit, then Hooke's law is there here also. Hooke's law for shear stress is what? Tau. The shear stress is directly proportional to what? The shear strain. What is that? Phi. Tau is directly proportional to the shear stress is directly proportional to the shear strain within elastic limit. What is this? This is Hooke's law for shear stress. So this can be written as tau equal to I introduce a proportionality constant with a, a notation G. G multiplied by phi. What is this thing? G is proportionality constant and it has a name. What is this name? This is called as modulus of 
मॉडुलस ऑफ रिजिडिटी जस्ट लाइक ई यंग्स मॉडुलस ऑफ इलास्टिसिटी दिस मॉडुलस ऑफ रिजिडिटी इज आल्सो कंसीडर्ड कॉल्ड एज अ इलास्टिक कांस्टेंट इट इज आल्सो अ प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ अ मटेरियल ओके सो एवरी मटेरियल हैज इट्स ओन वैल्यू ऑफ जी ओके so this is what we call it as modulus of rigidity and we don't have anybody name so e we have called it as young's modulus of elasticity but this doesn't have any name starting at we call it as modulus of rigidity then one more term what is called as one more term what is called as okay okay this is called as bulk modulus bulk is also called as bulk modulus of elasticity or bulk modulus in short and usually denoted by capital k and before i proceed what to what shall be the unit of g what shall be the unit of g so you can define here go what is g g is equal to tau divided by divided by pi is the elastic unit okay i want to know what is the unit of g so what is the unit of tau shear stress So many newton per millimeter square. That is Pascal or mega Pascal. Okay. What is the unit of phi? It is in radians. It doesn't have any unit. So therefore, the unit of G is same as unit of tau. So similarly, the G also is expressed in newton per millimeter square. Newton per meter square, which is the same as that of the unit of E. Unit of E also is same. Okay. So. Now K, which is called as bulk modulus, okay, bulk modulus. This also is called as elastic constant. So K is a bulk elastic constant of a material. It is also a property. G is also called as elastic constant of a material, and E also is called as elastic constant. We have only called as E, G, and K. These are called as elastic constants. And all these are properties of a material, and therefore all these are related. They are related. E, G, and K, they are all related. I have to define them. Let me see what is meant by K. Okay, but these are all related. What is their relationship? I shall be discussing it in my next class. But I shall define this. What is bulk modulus? Okay, I want to find out the bulk modulus of some material, say aluminium, or anything, any steel, anything, some material whose bulk modulus I want to find out. So what I do is I make a cube from that material. Okay, I, I prepare a cube. Okay, cube is like this. So I am showing only one face. Please don't think that it has only one face. It has six faces. So I have made a cube. From the material whose bulk modulus I want to find. Okay, I have made a cube. Okay, now I apply the same amount of normal stress on all six faces. On all six faces, I apply okay on this say sigma x equal to sigma, and also on this side I apply sigma. I am similar here. In sigma y, it is also sigma, and you know, also sigma. And in the z direction, I apply sigma, and exactly opposite to that face, I also apply sigma. Okay, so what I want? So whose bulk modulus I want from that material? I have made a cube, and I have applied, I have applied normal stress. Equal amount on all the six faces. Okay. Now when I apply, it, now I find out what. Okay. I can now I will in position to define what's called as bulk modulus. Bulk modulus is the ratio of equal normal stress, whatever has been applied on the cube, divided by what? Divided by volumetric strain. Divided by volumetric strain. This is called as bulk modulus. Bulk modulus is the ratio of 
the normal equal normal stress applied on the cube to the volumetric strain of that cube okay so this is what is called as the bulk modulus as i said this also is a property of the material and what is the relationship between e g k okay that i will discuss it in my next class